<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and in this video here, we're going to be revisiting the Xbox 360, and this is specifically going to be for bad update users, if you have a bad update enabled system. Although, technically, if you do follow the steps here, you will also be able to do this on a JTAG or a RGH, so it's not completely exclusive to that. However, this is going to be showing you all how you can, well, set up something such as Zell Launch right here, and then utilize Zell on your bad update system. Now, this is a little bit special, because if you have something such as a JTAG, or RGH, all you have to do to boot into Zell is press the eject button. But on a system such as a bad update system, you cannot do that. And Zell is short for the Xenon Linux loader, which allows you to, well, in short, load up Linux. Uh, this isn't going to be exclusive to that, and there's a few other functionalities there, and also the Linux builds that you can use are pretty outdated to my understanding. However, you could do a few other things such as load up a few emulators which are in ELF format through Zell. So that's what this allows you to do. Additionally, it's also a cool and quick way to get your keys if needed, although it's a little bit redundant here on bad update since typically something such as XE Unshackle is going to show that immediately. Either way, I've had a lot of questions asking how you can load up Zell, how you can load up Zell Launch, how you can actually utilize this. So since you can't just press the eject button and boot into it on a bad update system, there's a few extra steps here, but it's nothing all too bad. So to jump into this here, you're of course going to need your bad update enabled system already working, running, and operating, and just the basic know-how of how to navigate it. Additionally, you're also going to need a USB drive to transfer a few files over, and preferably use something like a computer. I suppose you can use a phone or something else, but it's just going to be easier to extract and move everything over on the PC. I'll go ahead and show you all that over at the PC, but let me go ahead and turn off the system just so I can pull out the USB drive. Now I'm going to have several links down below in the description of this video, and the first thing is going to be the most important, which is going to be Zell Reloaded on here. This has been fixed up and compiled by Alex Free, as well as released by them in a fork, and this one here specifically works on Winchester models. However, it only works on Winchester models. If you do not know what motherboard you have, quite literally you can fire up something like XE Unshackle, and at the beginning there, it tells you what your motherboard is. I'm going to be doing this on a Trendy, so if you do not have a Winchester, then there's going to be some additional steps you have to take here. So essentially there's two paths. If you have a Winchester, you're going to take one path, and if you do not have a Winchester, you're going to be taking another path. Keep in mind, the Winchester is going to be more limited, unfortunately. Either way, there's a few things that we can check out here. You can go ahead and read Alex Free's post, but the main thing we're going to need here is Zell Reloaded. So you can click on the GitHub link, which I'll probably have this linked down below in the description as well. And from here, the one we're going to be downloading is Zell Launch. Go ahead, download the zip, and save it somewhere you can easily find it. Now there's going to be another post here. It's going to be, I'll probably have to just put these directly in there, uh, but in the, let's see, eighth post, uh, there is going to be a link to the free 60 projects Zell Reloaded itself, and this here is going to be if you do not have a Winchester. So if you have anything else, a Xenon, a Zephyr, Opus, Falcon, Jasper, Trinity, Corona, if you have any of those other motherboards that are not a Winchester, you're going to need to get this download for Zell Reloaded right here. Now that second download is going to be something called a Tarball, so you're going to need something to extract it out properly. And if you're a little lost on that, you could use something such as a 7 zip, just download it and install it like a normal application and it should get you sorted. Now that we have our two downloads here, the first thing we're going to need is Zell Launch. From this, you can right click this and use something such as 7-zip to just extract it right here. When you have the folder right here, what I like to do is just give it a nicer name. So I'm going to just rename this to Zell Launch, just like that. And within Zell Launch, there's only three files here. You have your default executable, the zell.bin, which is going to be Zell Reloaded, and then your README. Since the README is really short, I'd recommend giving this a good once over here and just make sure you understand it. Once that's all done, we can close out of here. And here's the thing, if you have a Winchester motherboard, this is exclusive for Winchester users, you're done at this point. All you need to do is right click, copy this out, make sure you've plugged your USB drive into your computer, you can go over to an applications or apps directory, and then you can paste it alongside your other applications. And that's really all there is to it. 
Now, if you do not have a Winchester, there's an extra step you have to make right here. This is because this file right here, this is Zell Reloaded, and this one specifically only seems to work properly on Winchester motherboards. I mentioned this here because not only Alex Free was helping someone out here with some issues when they tried to use the newly compiled version, it just did not work on their Falcon motherboard. Additionally, I ended up trying this on my own Trendy here, and I could not get any homebrew to properly launch using the newly compiled version. But if you use the older version, it seemed to work on there. Only issue is, like I said, if you don't have a Winchester motherboard, the older version is not going to have support for it. So again, if you have any other motherboard which is not a Winchester, this is how you can get that sorted. Go over to the Zell Reloaded 2 Stages tarball that you have here. It's going to be the tar.gz file, and you're going to have to extract it twice. So you can use 7-zip, right-click, and extract it out. Once extracted, it's going to give you a tar file. Now you can right-click the tar file, use 7-zip, and this time extract it into its own folder. Now you should have a Zell Reloaded 2 Stages folder. Go ahead, open this up, and you're going to see a lot of files right here. The only file that we're going to care about is zell2f.bin. Right-click and copy this out. Now what you can do is go to your USB drive, go over to Applications, make sure you have Zell Launch copied over, and what we can do is right-click and paste this in. Now, after that's been pasted over, we have to get rid of the original zell.bin. So go ahead, delete that, and then the zell2f.bin, we're going to right-click, rename this, and it'll just be zell.bin. So again, for this step here to copy this file out, you only need to do that if you do not have a Winchester. So if you have any other motherboard that is not a Winchester, you need that older version of Zell. You can also tell by the date modified right here. You can see right here the older build was modified in 2013, while as the newest one was modified in 2025. So just keep that in mind. Either way, once that's been sorted out, let's go ahead and eject this here, and I'll show you how you can at least boot up Zell. Now once you're back at your system and booted up into Aurora, we can go ahead and add Zell Launch to this just to make it easier to access. You can press the start button, go to content, make sure your path has been added, and you can scan now if you do not have auto scan enabled. Just go ahead and wait a few moments for this while it finds the title. Since I've already had this added before, you're going to notice that it'll probably originally be called Xbox 360 Dashboard, but you can go ahead and tap the Y button, go down here to rename, tap A, and then you can rename this to Zell Launch or whatever you want to call it. Once that's all done, we're all good at this point, so we can now go ahead and fire up Zell. To do that, just tap the A button. Now when Zell Reloaded starts, it's going to be like your system is soft resetting, but you're going to be at a blue screen with Zell Reloaded right here. A bunch of text is going to fly down, and then at the bottom, once it stops, you're going to be at this point here, where it's going to show your console sensitive information, such as your CPU key, your DVD key. If you are hooked up to your local network, I'm personally using an Ethernet cable. You're also going to get your IP address for the system, as as well as the MAC address, and it's still going to be looking for something to launch. That's because we haven't set up anything else here. However, I did want to show you the network configuration part. You could see the local IP address right here, and while your system is up and running with Zelle, you can actually hit this on your network using a browser. All you need to do is open up a browser on the device on the same network your console is on, punch in that IP address into the address bar, hit enter, and it's going to bring you to a little web server that is currently being hosted on your Xbox 360. Now there's not too much here. You do have your CPU key, your DVD key, and from here you can download even more sensitive information. So for example, if you want to download the raw flash from here, you can do that. You should already have a flash backup, but just in case, you can always download it from here. You can also download your decrypted key vault as well as your fuse set. If you decided to download all of them, they should look something like this. There's the flash dump at 16.5 megabytes, there's the key vault, it is 16.5 kilobytes, and then your fuses.txt. Now, if you've already backed up your console sensitive information, you don't necessarily need these, but if you don't have them, it's good to have these on hand just to save them for your specific system. And I'm sorry if this is a little underwhelming here, but that's pretty much what you can do here. Aside from looking at the startup log, you can now shut down or reboot your system, which are both pretty self-explanatory. Now, I'm going to point out this GBA temp post here, because unfortunately for anybody who has a Winchester, this is about the furthest you're going to be able to go. You could try your luck at loading up a few things here in the next step, 
step. However, when I tried it with that Winchester specific Zell, I myself was not able to get anything to load up on here, and this seemed to match what others were showing as well too. And even Alex Free mentions here that Zell Reloaded build corresponds to said release of Moopin64, that would probably work correctly. And they've even stated that I always want to try Moopin64, but it's going to be a nightmare to try to make it Winchester compatible if it isn't even working on a Jasper right now with semi current Zell from 2021. So just keep that in mind. This might change in the future, I'm not the one to speak on that, but unfortunately if you have a Winchester, you could try your luck again at loading something through Zell but you might be limited to just accessing Zell itself. So there is something else I want to show you all, which is how you can load up something through the Linux loader. In my example, I'm going to be loading up an N64 emulator. So to do this here, I'm actually going to shut down the system remotely because I do need that USB drive. When you do that, it is going to give you a message at the bottom and then your system will shut down. Now, this is not by any means a tutorial on how to set up one of these emulators, but they're pretty self-explanatory and I'm going to show you here just real quick as an example. I'll have the console mods page linked down below in the description of this video and if you're here you can go to the libxenonemulators.elf section. There's not too many of them here, I'm going to be honest with you all, and people might be excited over the Dreamcast one here, but it is experimental and it's not going to be super great. There's many different ways of emulating, well, any of these systems here, uh, but the one I'm going to use is N64 in this example. So if you want to get any of these here, you just need to click on the download. I'm going to click on Moopin 64360, and from here, you just go ahead and download this 7-zip file and save it somewhere you can easily find it. Now, I already have two things here. I have the Moopin 64 emulator, and I also have have a few games that I've copied over that I want to fire up on the console itself. For the emulator itself, you just need to take the 7-zip file and then you just need to right click and extract it out into its own folder. Now once that's been extracted, go ahead and open your Moopin64 folder and if you have not set up a ELF emulator like this, it's going to be different than an XEX emulator. Uh, slightly different, but it's not too difficult here. What we can do first is go ahead and open up this README and I'd recommend giving this a good once over. Uh, it's not all too long right here and it'd be recommended just to read this so you get a basic understanding of what's going on here. Once you read that, you can go ahead and close out of this, and now we just need to do a file copy. We need to get the Moopin64360 folder as well as the xenon.elf. Go ahead, grab the both of these, right click, copy them. Now go over to your USB drive, and in the root of the USB drive, we're going to paste them right here. So this is going to go alongside like everything else. So for example, like next to your launch.ini, you should have xenon.elf and then moopin64360 is just going to sit right there. Now as for the games themselves, they can go anywhere, but I'm going to go into my N64 folder and I have a few games that I'd like to play. Just go ahead, grab the games you want, copy them out. Now the place I like to put them is I like to contain them within the moopin64360 folder. I'm going to make a new folder here and I'll call it ROMs, just basic enough. Inside the ROMs folder, I'm going to paste that, and there we go, it's all done. So that is all the setup we need if we want to set this up to actually load something. Now we just need to right click, eject the USB drive, and take it back over to the system. Just like usual, once you're back in Aurora, go ahead and go to Zell Launch and now launch it just like before. This time around when you fire up Zell, go ahead and wait for it to get to the bottom, but you're going to notice that it's going to get to a executing screen right here. Just wait a little bit. It's going to get to another screen. It might look something like this. This is specifically how Moopin fires up. And then once it gets to this point, congratulations, you've actually been able to load something through Zell itself. Now what we can do is navigate over to the Moopin64 directory, ROMs. We can fire up any of these. You know, I'll go ahead and fire up Goldeneye. Wait a little bit for the ROM to load in. And after a few seconds, I'm not getting any of this out. So let's see. There we go. All right, it's able to load in. So that's about all there is to it here. So congratulations, if you were a little bit confused on how to use Zell Reloaded, on how to actually launch Zell, on how to, well, use Zell Launch and try to figure out what it was, then congratulations, you should hopefully be at a better spot now. It does take a bit to load in here, but you can see that this is actually running and working. And if people are wondering, you know, about the frame rates, like it not looking or really performing all too well, yeah, that's the Moopin64 emulator itself. Uh, it's not bad, 
but there's certainly many, many better ways to play your N64 games on definitely more modern devices here in 2025. But if you still want to play some of the classic N64 games, I know like years ago I'd played uh, Smash Bros on here. Uh, it worked pretty well for that. But if you're looking for some of the more obscure stuff where you really just want a range of games to work properly, this is not going to be it. Also, little note here, if you're noticing that you're using HDMI and you do not have any sound output, that is a limitation of Zelle itself, unfortunately. So if you're wanting to utilize anything through Zelle and you're wanting sound at the same time, you're going to have to go through the AV multiport. So using something such as composite or component cables will be required for sound. Either way, that is about it for this video here. Hopefully you get a little bit more of an understanding over Zell Reloaded, Zell Launch, and Zell in general. Hopefully you're now able to actually fire it up on your console, and hopefully you got a little bit of usage out of it here. Either way, that is about it for this video here. This is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated, and if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too.